So now we need to go on to our daisies. So that will be the wicker white. I think I got plenty in there. And just to show you the difference, I will use a filbert for these. This is a number eight Royal Majestic 4170. Don't know if you can see that, but this is, some call it cat's tongue, but this is a filbert brush. So I'm just gonna load up with plenty of the wicker white and I'm just gonna follow over the yellow ochre. Again, I do not have to cover it completely. I'm pressing, pulling, and twist and lift to a point. Now the centers will cover some of this. The yellow ochre gives it a little bit of depth of color. You could use gray as an undercolor, or some people use a blue for their daisies. It depends on what look you're going for. I'm just going to use this, do the same here. Now I try because I'm right handed to go from the left to the right. That way I don't get my hand, like if I was going over here and needed to rest my hand on the canvas, I wouldn't be getting into the wet paint. But when I'm doing a tutorial, I sometimes forget to pay attention to what I'm doing. I just try to get it on here for you. Alrighty. And now we can do this one. You notice these are curving because of the way this daisy is sitting. And this side I'll curve this way. Whoops, that petal kind of went wonky, didn't it? Okay, so there we have our centers. I mean, not our centers, but our petals. Now this one, I may want to go over it again, or I could just leave it where the yellow ochre is really coming through. Depends on how white you want your petals to seem. And I may do that just because against this uh, vintage white, um, I want it to be a little whiter, white. Er, not wider. So instead I'm going to go in with the daffodil yellow. I want these centers to be nice and bright. And I'm just, this is the first coat. I'm going to have to do a couple. And this one is facing this way. And that one is facing that way. So we'll let that dry and we'll come back with, uh, I probably do another layer of white just so they're good and opaque as soon as everything's dry. So let's continue with our daisies. Now we already had undercoated them with the yellow ochre and then um, I did one coat of the white and you can see it's not that opaque and we really want our whites of our daisies to be bright. So I have my number eight Royal Majestic Filbert. You could also use the eight flat or a 10 flat for this as I did with those. So I'm just loading it up. It was dampened first and dried off, not dried, but you know, tapped off on a towel. And then we're just gonna go over our original petals. Now we're not trying to be perfectly aligned we're just doing the best we can to create our petals coming to the center and I'm pressing, pulling, and then twisting so it gets a point there towards the center. Narrows the petal stroke. And it doesn't matter if you go over the center a little bit, we're gonna go back over that. We just have that yellow as and under color to start with. And then we'll go back over it. Same with down here. We're just gonna pull that wicker white over the white petals again. Now some of the yellow ochre may show underneath 
that's perfectly fine. And if you feel like that's too far apart, those two petals, just go ahead and overstroke right between. Some of the petals on daisies do overlap. And if you have crazy daisies, you've got lots of overlapping petals. So let's continue on to the side. I'm getting some bright light coming from my north facing window. So if it's darker over here, well, maybe that's from that. I have a jar sitting in the way. Ah, there you go. My last glass painting tutorial project was sitting there in the way, blocking the light. So there we go. Just enjoy painting the petals. You could also do this with a round brush and I may do some more tutorials with round brush painting. But you can get the effect very easily with the filbert. The flat brush will give you a little bit different effect, but it's close enough to what you're wanting. So some of them curve rather than going straight. And all of that. So there we have our white petals on our daisies. So we will come back in and we will do the center again. A little more in the center. Now I had brushed that in. I do like the texture that a scruffy brush brings. So we're going to use a small scruffy brush to tap in some of the center. Now I like the scruffy brush texture that it leaves and that's why I use it. You could also brush in another coat of paint. I'm double loading. You notice I get one side and the other side of the paint. And then I tap it off a little bit. Tap one side, the other side, tap it a little bit to work it in. And then you just, I, this is school bus yellow and this is yellow ochre. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of tap the school bus yellow towards the top and then the yellow ochre towards the bottom. And you notice there's some yellow ochre in the center, that's fine. We're giving not only texture, but we're giving a touch of dimension to our daisies and the way you want it facing. This one is kind of facing this way. So that's why the yellow ochre was right along here. And this one we're gonna have facing this way. So the school bus yellow will be towards the top. Make sure I have that right. School bus yellow. Now you could also use daffodil yellow or moon yellow, but I'm just tapping school bus yellow along the top. And then I'll bring the yellow ochre down here along the bottom. And you see how the dark kind of creates a little dark shadow there in the center? That's good because daisies can have that shadow. So this one we're going to have facing that way as well. And I'm just tapping this color on. Now don't worry about making a mistake. You know why? Because you can go right back over it if you need to or let it dry, come back with paintbrush if you want to fix it. Nothing is written in stone with painting. So there you have your centers tapped in a touch more. And I'm rinsing out my brush. I'm drying it on a towel, just tapping it on a towel. And I'm going to get some of that daffodil yellow onto my palette. And we'll bring in a touch of brightness to our centers. So this is pretty dry. Well, I don't know, scruffy brushes, they gotta be really dry to work right. So we can get another scruffy or I can just do this with the corner of my number 10. Where is my number 10? It was right here or any corner of any brush you feel comfortable with. This is a 12. I'm just gonna be using the corner and I'm just gonna tap in some of the color Brighten it up along the top. You don't want to obscure the, the school bus yellow. And if you think you have too much, just go back in there. And actually you could do the whole center this way if you wished. But I do like the, what the scruffy brush does. So here's some more of that bright color. All in there. If you wanted to tap in a little bit more of the yellow ochre along the bottom. Just 
just to give it that added dimension. A little touch in the center. I rinsed up my brush and then I'm going to get just the yellow ochre. I don't know if this will be dark enough. And I'm just going to do a C stroke. Just do the C. A C is what I call it and it creates a dimple and if you think you feel you need it you can add a touch of thicket or burnt umber to help you bring that color up a notch whoops or that shadow up a notch one second let me try to get my thicket so this is the thicket a little more than I needed because I just needed a touch but so let's see if we can do this. So what you're doing is creating a C right there. Now you could do this with a liner if you felt more comfortable doing it with a liner brush. Now the yellow ochre is still wet, so it's kind of blending in and that's okay. You want an effect, not just a stark line. Now this one's a little darker than I had anticipated, so I'm going to pull it up a bit with a touch of yellow ochre on my brush. You could do this with any of the yellows if you wanted to do it with the moon, or not moon, but the um, school bus yellow. And you see how that creates a little dimension in your daisy there. And we're gonna do like we did on the Black Eyed Susans now. We're gonna take our stylus and we're gonna add some dots. I'm gonna do this first, I'm gonna do a few with the Thick it. It's very thick. So just add a few decorative dots around the edges. Just a few. Less is less is more. Because you're going to add some other colors to this. You could use burnt umber. You could come in with a touch of red. And I'm wiping off my stylus because I'm going to get another color. Do a little burnt umber, not burnt umber, sorry, yellow ochre. You notice I'm only going along the bottom just to accentuate that bottom of that. And you know what, I forgot to put my details in my petals, but that's still doable. Now I'm going to put in some school bus yellow, just a few So there you have it. If you wanted to do a few white, you could do that too. Just a touch, that's too thick. Now another way you could have done the petals is if you double loaded your filbert and you double load a filbert, I will show you really quick. You would do one side in one color, one side in the other, and as you pull it, those two colors will combine. And I would have done a white, maybe a warm white with white, or a touch of gray, or a touch of yellow. Any of those would work. And then the petals would have some striations. But I'll show you another way that I add some details in the petals. And you can do this with a burnt umber. I'm gonna do it with, um, I'm going to do it with the yellow ochre. These are going to be subtle. Now, I, this paint is inky, and I'm trying to make sure it's not too inky. Give it a little more because I don't want it to be fat lines. Now, if you're like me and you have a tougher time getting your lines really skinny, I use a smaller one. This is the number two liner, I think. Plaid one for guard. I can't really see it. I'm half blind but it's the liner in the 10 pack. I think I have another liner here that's even skinnier. I don't know, it looks like it's the same. This is a 10 aught or zero, but then you just pull from the center. I have it my tip loaded with inky paint and you're just painting in some details into your petals. Just skinny little lines, and I'm almost making a V. The, the base of these lines all connect, so it's like a V. 
and then you're just pulling this thinnest of lines. You can do two, you can do three. So I'm going to continue adding that bit of detail to my daisies. That nice inky paint, get nice skinny lines. I'm twirling the brush and pulling it to a point. Make sure I'm getting that fine tip and barely even touching to the surface so it keeps fine lines. Make these subtle, you don't want it to be too busy, which is easy to do. It's so easy to overdo these things. Now looking at this, I'm thinking I need some more daisies like up here. Let's pull this down so I can get it all the way in. Some daisies up here, don't you think? I'll have to sketch some and see what I think. It's easy to add, very hard to take away. So I will see about doing that. When it starts getting thick on your brush and then it starts making fatter lines because you have to give more pressure to get any paint to lay down. So adding a little bit more to the brush or maybe adding a touch more water can help. Okay, let's take a good look at this. So it definitely needs something more, like up here, I think. It's very light up there. But I'm gonna think on that. So in the meantime, we are going to bring some shading down here on the bottom. And I showed you in my topiary paintings how I add some shadowing down there with a little bit of either floating medium or some um, glazing medium. And then you add a bit of the burnt umber to it to create the shadowing. So I'm gonna get that out and then we'll be back and add that. Alrighty, let's just add, this is glazing medium, but you can use the floating medium. I got a little bit too much out here. I thought the thing was almost empty and I was wrong. So it really dumped out, but I'm loading it with the glazing medium and I'm working. This is real brown. You could use burnt umber. And then I'm just, I want it to be faint. I want it to be darker by the basket and then sort of fade away. So that's how come I'm staying right along the bottom where it was very thin very thick and then I'm just adding this down here just to give that little bit of shadowing and the same with along here over the leaves because that basket would be casting shadow on the leaves sorry getting my hair in there again and if you want it darken it just a hair Add just, I mean, the bare minimum of black in there. That's even too much. Black is super powerful. So you just want to add just the tiniest hint of it. And give it a little bit of extra oomph. So we would never really established where the light was coming from. I wasn't too worried about it. I was just trying to get the design in there. So whether we're putting the shadowing over here, we could have the light coming straight down and therefore the shadow is only underneath this part. So, and we didn't do a tabletop. You can add a tabletop by giving it a dark, a darker color. Maybe you want, want to use a parchment or linen. This is tapioca. You could put a tabletop down, but I was, more interested in teaching how to paint a basket and then how to add the flowers to your basket. And if you wanna put some shadows under your daisies, again, keep it, keep it transparent and then just add those around your daisy flowers where they'd be casting a shadow on the basket. Reload as you need. Just reload. And 
and add that. Again, less is more. So if you just do one coat and you think, oh, that's not enough shadow, then come back and do more. But don't overdo it because a lot of times um, acrylics dry darker than when they're wet. Therefore, it's a little dark. So I just lift it with my finger. Then you add a little bit more glazing medium to the brush. That makes it a little more transparent. Bring a shadow underneath that one. Shadow right underneath these flowers. Underneath the foliage on the basket. And just play with it and see what kind of effect you get. And if you're happy with it. Okay, so I'm going to sketch out where I want some more daisies up here just to kind of balance it out. I think these are so bright down here that they're uh, putting it a little off balance. And this looks a little bare up here. And I really don't think I want to add more colors. So I wouldn't put in like a purple or a pink or anything. Though if you wish, go right ahead. Okay, I'm going to work it out how I want to finish this up. And we'll come back to it. Okay, I kind of figured out what I wanted to do up here. And if you can see on this picture, see if I can get it to come into focus. There we go. You see how these are, are this is taken from the side. So I was gonna do some of these side facing daisies. And if you can see that one right there, you can barely see a touch of yellow. So I may add that, or I just may keep them all side facing. So I'll keep, put that up there so I can see it. And we'll start with the stems. I'm going to use my number 10 flat, or is this the 12? Oh, well, that's the 12. Either one will work. And I'm going to get my fresh foliage out. Not sure where it's at. My lighter green to go with it to put on the stem. Get it running low on that one. But I'm going to double load as I have been through most of this. Double load. Double load. And then I'm just going to pull some stems down where I, if you could see the drawings on there, where I kind of placed my daisies. And that one will go behind. So we'll just kind of pretend that has a thing there stem there. Okay, so now I'm going to do the underside, which is rather flat, and then it curves. It has a little, it's kind of the upside down of those. And I'm just double loading the brush. You notice one side's darker than the other. And we'll just do a flat, and then we'll bring it down like that. Not too big. And the same here, flat, and bring it down. And the two colors mix a touch there. So we're going to leave that. If you wanted to do a leaf or some stems off of them, that's very doable. Just give them some interest there. But if you notice in my picture, you don't see much foliage. You just see the stems. So that's what I'm going for in that. So now I'm going to go back to my filbert that we used on the other petals. Now I could, um, I think I will, I'll bring in some warm white or vintage white just to give these petals a little bit of dimension. There's the wicker white and then here's the vintage white which is a little more ecru or have a little uh, brown I guess to it. So one side I'm loading the filbert with the wicker white and then I turn it over and I load the other side with the vintage white. And then I'm just looking at my photograph and the petals in the center are rather short. So I'll do that again, reload with the two colors and then they kind of curve in from the side. They're so close in color, you almost don't see them. 
And against this color back here, it's not real stark. So these are going to be rather subtle. And if you ever feel like you need to go over it to add a little more oomph. Now, if you get into this, don't worry, you can restate it. So I'm going to do the next one. And you may go over the blue flowers, like the top. And if you want to come back in and go back over the blue, you can. And just paint in your petal. Now, if you wanted this to be stand up more, then you've come in and first pounce more of the green in, and then it'll show up. And have a good contrast there. Now, like I said, in one of them, the yellow is showing. So I'll pick one, maybe this one. And I'll go ahead and I'll put some of that yellow in there and then we'll come back over it with some more white in just a minute. We'll just touch that yellow in there. I don't know, I could probably try to go back over it with the white right now. There's no one way to do this. You just play it by ear. Now I'm picking up the yellow. And then this has like some truncated petals that go over that. Now I picked up too much of the yellow, so I'll have to wait and redo some of the green. I will have to come over these. I'll come over these petals a little bit because they're blending in or showing the green through too much and I want that white to be really stand out. So come down. I'm just wiping out my brush and I'm just going to go into that green again and fix that edge. You notice I wasn't too precise over where the dark green and where the light green was. I'm just filling in. And there we have a few more of the daisies. So I'm looking at those. I'm thinking I want the white to come a little bit further in. And I'm liking that. I am liking that a little bit more. I felt like that cap was too much. Just too, too much. Now, I'll have you know, I'm just thinking with this right now, trying to get a feel for it. And you can do whatever you wish. Whatever works for you. Okay. Like I said, if you're not getting enough contrast with the background, then go ahead and before you add these, have a little bit more of that darker green in there. And then you will get that contrast. So this blue, I probably will come back and restate that one just because it will set these daisies to the back if you do that. And then the blue flowers will be clo more, more closer to you. So let's, I'm just looking at it. And I think that's all good. So if you wanted to add a little more dark color in here, more green, feel free to do so. And you can do it with leaves. It could be slider leaves. It could just be greenery. It could just be whatever you want it to be. It got into some yellow, that's great. You're just bringing all those colors together and we're not worrying about anything. You can add a little bit of leaves to your blue flowers. Whatever you desire, just add some more to, because green just balances everything out. Makes those flowers pop. Gives them a little more 
interest. Now you want to add some leaves to this guy. Go right ahead. You could add a daisy here, in fact, if you wanted to, or even one of the Black Eyed Susans or another blue flower. You pick. You can add vines with some little leaves. I need that one to go over again. Do what pleases you. It's all well and good. Oh, got yellow in there. Got it too close on my palette. Rinsed out my brush, and then I'm going to come back into the white for that one. Where's my white? I just think around. I'm almost out. I use a lot of wicker white, so I really need to start finding the bigger bottles. I don't always have them in stock, which can be quite frustrating. But just, I don't think that's dry enough to really impact. that. Ooh, I like the way that green pulled into it. I do, I do. Okay, I'll start, stop dinking and we'll let that be and then I'll take a look. Walking away is one of the best things you can do sometimes and then come back to it and then you can see what you want to change what you want to add, what may look like a blank spot, and then you can fix it, change it, what have you. So we're going to stop right here and I will be back to finish it up.